It happened an age ago. But when I recall, I see it true. On a night of wintry fog, the rune of death was stolen. And the demigods began to fall. Starting with Godwin the Golden. Queen Marika was driven to the brink. The shattering ensued a war that wrought only darkness. The Elden Ring was broken. But by whom? And why? What could the demigods ever hope to win by war? The conqueror of the stars, General Rodan. Blade of Mikola, Melania the Seventh. These two were the mightiest to remain, and locked horns in combat. But there would be no victor. So, we inhabit a fractured world, awaiting the arrival of the Elder Lord. Unless, of course, thou shouldst take the crown. America the Eternal is nowhere to be found. And in the night of the Black Knives, Godwin the Golden was first to perish. Soon, America's offspring, demigods all, claimed the shards of the Elden Ring. The mad taint of their newfound strength triggered 
the shattering. A war from which no lord arose. A war leading to abandonment by the greater will. Oh, rise now, ye tarnished, ye dead who yet live. The call of long lost grace speaks to us all. Horalu, chieftain of the Badlands, the ever brilliant Gold Mask. Fear, the deathbed companion, the loathsome Dung Eater, and Sir Gideon Ophnir, the all knowing. again bless a tarnished of no renown cross the fog to the lands between to stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord. Don't worry, Torrent. Fortune is on his side. We found him here, after all. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. even if it does violate the Golden Order.
yes. Tarnished, are we? Come to the lands between for the Elden Ring? Hmm? Of course you have. No shame in it. Unfortunately for you, however, you are maidenless. Without guidance, without the strength of runes, and without an invitation to the round table hold, you are fated, it seems, to die in obscurity. Luckily for you, however, there is one shining ray of hope for even the maidenless, me, Vare. Take care to listen. Are you familiar with grace? The golden light that gives life to you tarnished. You may also behold its golden rays pointing in a particular direction at times. That is the guidance of grace, a path that a tarnished must travel. Hmm, indeed. Grace's guidance holds the answers. It will lead you tarnished to the path you are meant to follow, even if it leads you to your grave. Grace's guidance will reveal the path forward, most certainly, to Castle Stormvale, over on the cliff, the home of the decrepit demigod Godric the Grafted. So happy to see you. I am Alexander, also known as the Iron Fist. And as you can see, I'm stuck here. Please, can you help me out of this? Just give me a good smack from the rear with something nice and big. And I'll pop clean out, I'm sure. Don't dally. No, there's no need to fret. I'm very well trained. Give it your all, I say. mighty wallop of yours almost spelt the end of me. <laughs> ah. Well, I'm out now, and that's what counts. I thank you. And as a token of my appreciation, I'd like you to have this. Once again, the pleasure is mine. I am the warrior Jar known as Alexander. Iron Fist Alexander, in fact. I journey to the east, where I intend to further my education in the ways of war. And beyond these lands lie the scarlet, rot blighted Kalid Wilds. And upon their southern edge is Redmayne Castle, in which a festival of combat is being held. I'd heard whispers of such festivities before. Doesn't the notion set your breast a flutter? Greetings, traveler from beyond the fog. 
I am Melina. I offer you an accord. Have you heard of the Finger Maidens? They serve the Two Fingers, offering guidance and aid to the Tarnished. But you, I am afraid, are maidenless. I can play the role of Maiden, turning runes into strength to aid you in your search for the Elden Ring. You need only take me with you to the foot of the Erd Tree. Then summon me by grace to turn runes into strength. Ah, another matter. I bequeath to you this ring. Use it to traverse great distances. It will summon a spectral steed named Torrent. Torrent has chosen you. Treat him with respect. This way, Tarnished. May I have a word? Pleasure to meet thee, Tarnished. I am the Witch Rena. I'd heard tell of a Tarnished hurtling about atop a spectral steed. And upon looking into the matter, the talk, I surmise, is of thee. Thou art possessed of the power, no? To call forth a spectral steed named Torrent. I was entrusted this for thee, by Torrent's former master. Tis a bell for calling forth spirits. Summon them with it. From ash and return to the earth tree, the spirits will obey thine command but briefly. As they recall battles past, now it is thine to do with as thou wishest. Forgive mine intrusion, tarnished. I doubt we shall again meet. But all the same, learn well the lands between. How long will it be, I wonder, before the tarnished tire of obeisance to the two fingers? Everyone's... been grafted? Everyone who came with me, they crossed the sea for me, they fought for me, <laughs> only to have their arms taken, their legs taken, even their heads taken, taken and stuck to the spider. Did you know, if you're grafted by the spider, you become a chrysalid? the lark when you think about it. You're all on your own, are you? And heading to Stormvale Castle. Enticed by the one in the white mask, I suppose. Oh, you've come to be one with the spider? Well, that makes us two peas in a pod. But I don't have your courage. It's scary, you know, having your arms cut off. Or legs. Or your head. I want to be like everyone else, but I'm just too scared. I'm nothing but a craven. It was a pleasure to see you. Oh, can you pass on a message for me? If you see the little chrysalids in Stormvale Castle, tell them I love them. And that, despite my craven heart, I'm sure they'll be joining their club soon enough. I'm finally getting the hang of this whole pain thing, you know?
in search of the Elden Ring. Emboldened by the flame of ambition. Forgive me. I've been testing you to see whether or not Grace truly does guide you, and whether you are fit to face the challenge that entails. It seems my worries were unfounded. Torrent had your measure from the very start, whereas I merely pretended. There is but one other thing I can do to offer you guidance. I can take you to the Round Table Hole, gathering place of tarnished champions, guided by grace. Let my hand rest upon you for but a moment. Oh, this is a rare occasion. I can't remember the last time a new Tarnished made their way to the Round Table. Very well. As your senior, I bid you welcome. It is safe here. You may let down your guard. Oh, I see you've just arrived. Welcome to the Round Table Hold. I'm Corin, a man of the cloth. I teach incantations. The strength granted us by the two fingers and explore the secrets of the golden order so that one day if a tarnished of the round table hold should become elden lord i might counsel them ensuring order regains its proper form writing rule over men by the way do you still see it the guidance of grace most tarnished are blind to it these days. You are something of a rare breed. Well, what do you say? Care to learn an incantation of the two fingers? Ah, hello. You must be new here. I'm... well, just call me Dialos. The honor of one's house holds little import in these lands. By the way, have you met a young woman named Lanya on your travels? She's my servant. But fickle as the wind. Take your eyes off her for but a moment and she's good as gone. If you find her, please be sure to tell me. You're a new face. No matter. It's all the same. 
Lay out your arms. Let's get smithing. I see you've noticed the chains. Nothing special. I'm a prisoner and these are my chains. I'm trapped by the hold. I'm dying smithing for you fools. <laughs> That's all there is to it. No, don't read too much into it. Well, no grudge against you. My being a prisoner is no fault of yours. Besides, I don't mind smithing. Despite my differences, the weapons get stronger all the same. Given time, technique never fails. Besides, it helps me forget. The sheer terror of her. Greetings, great champion called by grace. I am Fia. Circumstances have compelled my stay at the Round Table Hold. Great champion, would you allow me to hold you? But briefly, perhaps you might share with me some of your lively vigor and your stout-heartedness. Doing so will grant me the warmth of a champion. And you, I am sure, will bear a Balderkin's blessing. Do you think it vulgar, perhaps? Where I come from, it is a sacred act. Ah. You are very warm. What you felt light up inside you was a Baldekin's blessing. Though it is but a fleeting thing, I am afraid. Come back to me, should you require another. I will take you in my arms as often as you need. against taking the main gate into the castle. It's tightly guarded by hardened old hands. Oh, tr tr try the opening right here. The guards don't know about it. You'll breach the castle undetected. You're just the kind of tarnish that I like. I pray for your success. to meet you. The pleasure's mine. Roger is the name. A sorcerer, as uh, you might have guessed. I'm looking for a little something here in the castle. When I'm not hot-footing it from the troops, that is. But enough about me. 
What are you doing here in Stormvale Castle? This place is bristling with tarnished hunters, you know. They sacrifice our kind for grafting. Not exactly a place I'd stroll into without a purpose in mind. You can see it then, I take it. The guidance of grace. Well, enjoy it while you can. I'm tarnished, like you. But unlike you, I've seen neither hide nor hair of this guidance for the longest time. Still, I won't forget how it felt when I first came here, to the lands between. I'm privy to a few magical battle arts. Would you care to learn one? As a fellow tarnished, once guided by Grace, I'd love to help you out, if it please. Be proud. You were a fine warrior. Your only mistake was your choice of master. Let the winds lift you to a higher place. Well, who do we have here? Tarnished, are you? Clearly not one of Godric's lot. I am Nefeli Lu. Tarnished and warrior like you. I'm here by decree of my father. How utterly repellent this is. This grafting of Godric's ill befits a lord. He's tainted the very winds. If you intend to challenge Godric, I ask you call upon me. The winds run foul with his deeds. I'm certain father would permit me aid the fight. Apologies, but I've idled long enough. As fellow tarnished, we must each follow our own guidance. Down whatever road takes us to the throne of Elden Lord. Mighty dragon. Thou art a true born heir. Lend me thy strength, O kindred. Deliver me unto greater heights. I command thee, 
of all that is golden. to the bone. Pushing me about like that? And after all that grafting? Where did that get you? Look down on me, would ya? Godric, you filthy slug. Feel it. Feel it. Feel my bloody wrath. Oh. Hello there. This weasel was... Godric was always looking down on me. He got what he bloody deserved thanks to you. I tell you though, what goes around comes around. He had an ugly heart, an uglier countenance, and met the ugliest of ends, eh? <laughs> Hold. Perhaps I'll find my purpose there. Are you that new tarnished? You've done well. I am Enya, the finger reader. I interpret the words of the fingers, envoys to the greater will. Look there. The fingers tremble to welcome you, Shardbearer. Let their wisdom wash over you. Great Elden Ring, root of the Golden Order. 
Anchor of all lands, giver of grace, wellspring of all joy. Until it was shattered, the tragic corruption of the Order has taken its toll. Across the realm, life lies in ruin, fallen to pieces. Foul curses and misery spread, unabating. But the greater will has not abandoned the realm, nor the life that inhabits it. So it is that the tarnished are guided by grace, called to act, brave tarnished. Your great rune is a handsome shard of the Elden Ring. Seek another of its kind to become Elden Lord and restore the Golden Order. Let the words of the fingers guide you. Well, well, I see. A remembrance of gold has found its way into your possession. Demigods and even the crater of the champions are hewn by the earth tree upon their end into remembrances. They are valuable indeed. These remembrances yet house the power of their former masters. And should you wish to wield that same power, well, I will lend you the strength of the fingers. Oh, do not recoil from my offer. The fingers guide us all, and you tarnish. You are here to take, are you not? The children of the goddess, Queen Marika. She who is vessel of the Elden Ring. Tainted by the strength of their runes, her children warred, but none could become Elden Lord. And so grace was extended. To your kind, the tarnished. Listen, the fingers speak. The greater will has long renounced the demigods. Tarnished, show no mercy. Have their heads, take all they have left. Indeed. But remember one thing. The demigods are each and all the direct offspring of Queen Marika. Godric the Grafted was but a distant relation, the runt of the litter. His divine blood sorely diluted. You've received the wisdom of the Two Fingers, have you not? Then I bid you welcome, as a true member of the Round Table. I am known as Gideon Ofnir, as a tarnished who wishes to stand before the Elden Ring and become Elden Lord. I am accumulating knowledge to be all-knowing. You now belong to a select group of fellows. As such, I ask that you remain constant. You'll be after more great runes now, eh? Then, as your fellow, allow me to divulge a little knowledge. The inheritors of the great runes, the shard bearers. We of the round table know the location of five of them, including the one you defeated. Godric the Grafted, Lord of Stormvale. General Radan, who fought Melania and her rot to a standstill in the Caelid Wilds. Praetor Rykard, Lord of the Volcano Manor of Mount Gelmir. Morgot, the Grace Given, Veiled Monarch and Lord of Lame Dell, and Renala, Queen of the Full Moon, ruler of Rhea Lucaria's Academy. You'll still be after more great runes, won't you? Despite being the blood of Godfrey, first Elden Lord, 
He's a grotesque old fool grasping for power. His castle lies upon the cliff to Lindgrave's northwest, but I suspect you know that well enough already. Renala is queen of the Carian royals, who govern the academy. But Renala herself is no demigod. Her beloved Radagon left her to become Queen Marika's second husband, taking the title of King Consort. The Great Rune dwells within the Amber Egg that was Radagon's gift to her. He fought Melania and her rot to a standstill in the Caelid Wilds to Limgrave's east. And now Caelid has been engulfed by the Scarlet Rot. Even approaching the region is no mean feat. I've heard survivors of Radan's army are still in the wilds, staving off the rot with fire. And if it's true, I suspect Radan is still there as well, in Caelid. Though, I doubt he much resembles his former self anymore. He is a ruthless justicia who commands a company of inquisitors, reviled for his serpentine demeanor. The volcano, Mount Gelmir, lies in the west of the Altus Plateau, the realm of the Erd Tree. It was the stage of the most appalling battle in the entirety of the Shattering. Rykard has committed the grave sin of blasphemy, marking himself as an enemy never to be forgiven. It lies at the foot of the Erd Tree, in the east of the Altus Plateau. But the Two Fingers forbid us from venturing there. Until we've acquired enough great runes to repair the Elden Ring. Set your sights elsewhere for the time being. The Veiled Monarch can wait. Greetings. Nice to see you again. My name is Roderica. I should have told you sooner. Isn't this place impressive, though? The round table hold. Covert quarters of the Two Fingers. And gathering place of champions who vie to become Elden Lord. I never knew the guidance bestowed upon us tarnished had such fantastic roots. Although, it's all a bit much for me, in truth. I'm still looking for my own purpose. Now, look at you. Those eyes tell a story of a challenger who's felled his mark. Find him well. Now lay out your arms. The curly boy here. She's crestfallen and can scarcely swing a blade. But she has a gift for spirit tuning. I saw another one like her long ago. Their eyes share the same hue. It's all a bit much for me, in truth. I'm still looking for my own purpose. I don't believe you. But if I do have this talent, and goodness knows it would be my first, I suppose I should try to hone it, shouldn't I? I'll ask Master Hugh to teach me. Certainly, he does appear intimidating and holds no love for us tarnished. But I know he's trapped here at the Round Table Hold. So, I can tell. He's a gentle soul underneath it all. The girl. What about her? I need to stay with an ugly brute who only knows how to smith. Absurd. Besides, she'd never agree to it. I don't doubt you, but I know when something's too good to be true. I am pleased to see you again. Would you like me to hold you once more? The blessing is still aflame in your breast, dear. Would you like to be held regardless? You are so very warm. After I received the warmth and lively vigor 
from a number of champions, I lay with the remains of an exalted noble to grant him another chance at life. To do so is the purpose of my being. But before I could bear the noble into new life, I was awakened by the guidance of grace and chased from my birthplace. Pray, be kind. Despite all that, I still wish to be a deathbed companion. So please, let me hold you like this as often as it takes. Then good day to you, my dear. Ah, we meet again after all. I apologize for any offense given by my bearing, but I'm quite unable to move, you see. So, what do you need? Oh. Mm. Looks like we both got what we wanted out of Stormvale, didn't we? Well done, friend. Something to mark the occasion. Go on, take it. As you might have guessed, I still can't move. My fighting days are behind me. No need to be polite. I've no use for it anymore. The Bay were conceived at the Great Academy of Rhea Lucaria, to the north of this castle. In the past, they obeyed laws which contravened the Golden Order, or so I'm told. Fascinating, isn't it? That the Golden Order was pliable enough to absorb practices that contradicted itself in the past. With the Order broken, twisted, and in need of repair, such adaptability is more important now than ever. You again. I thought you'd receive a summons to the Round Table. Nefeli Lu. We met at Stormvale. I'm glad to see you here. I have something for you. I found it in Godric's grafting grounds. You defeated him. You should have it. Make good use of it. I don't intend to make a habit of scavenging corpses. Oh, your divinity have mercy and grant me forgiveness. The road is yet long, a god is not easily felled. But one day without fail you will have your wish. So please grant me forgiveness, Queen Merica. Huh. You, is it? I didn't notice you there. I'll be doing my job, same as ever. Just lay out your arms. Those words were not meant for you. I may be prisoner to you, tarnished lot, but my prayers are mine, and mine alone. Well, I've had my say. I'll be more careful, too. I spoke with the girl. She has a gift for spirit tuning, so I told her everything I know. I'm indebted to a spirit tuner I met long ago. It was all I could do to honor her. I'm sorry I doubted you. Good to see you again. Thank you very much. I have you to thank, don't I? For persuading Master Hugh, I can happily announce that he has taught me the noble toil of spirit tuning. I'm as yet unsure of what I might be able to accomplish, but if I might be able to help you all, I'd certainly like to try. And if there's any chance to ease the suffering of my dear men who were grafted, well, I certainly must try. Roderica, the Spirit Tune Apprentice. Pleased to make your acquaintance. You could spare some runes. Believe it or not, I studied glintstone sorceries at the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. For a small donation, I'd be happy to share my knowledge. You're a true.
true saint. My name is Topes. Presuming you're interested, I can teach you sorceries, as promised. Only, none of them are particularly great. I'm afraid my meager sorceries are no match for your generosity. Oh, right. I can tell you what I know about this place. That should help a bit. You've seen that structure to the north, towering over the water. That's the Academy of Rhea Lucaria, where we study glintstone sorceries. Only its doors have been closed for quite some time now. After they declared they wouldn't interfere with the shattering, the Academy cast repelling seals on the east gate leading to the capital, and the south gate leading here. As you might have guessed, the seals are still active, making entry to the Academy impossible without a glintstone key. And so I'm stuck here. A fledgling sorcerer with little chance of acquiring a key. When they cast the seals, I'd just popped out. And now I'm uprooted from my place of learning. Without one, you can't pass through the Academy. And you'll never reach the Erdtree capital. And if you find an extra glintstone key, perhaps, once you've tied up all your loose ends, and I can be very patient. Would you consider donating it to me? I know it. I'm a blunt stone. Nary a hint of talent for sorcery. But still, my place is at the Academy. Lanya. Oh, Lanya. It's me, Dialos. Answer me, would you? Hello, friend. Tell me if you know, would you? The whereabouts of the hidden house of those despicable fiends. The recusants who hunt their fellow tarnished. They laid hands upon my servant Lanya, and I refuse to let the insult stand. The tale of House Hoslo is told in blood. I, Dialos, swear to deliver the message. Ah, there you are. You claimed a great room and had your audience with the two fingers at the round table home. What was your impression? Uh, my doubts had been piling up, you see. The words of the two fingers cannot be trusted. Truly, naught but rambling, senile delusions. I believe that when the Elden Ring was shattered, the two fingers were corrupted, their guidance skewed. Even worse, the fingers harbor no love for our kind. That's the part that irks the most. Oh, I have a gift for you, something fit only for the wise. <laughs> means for circumventing the draw of the two fingers. Give it a try, won't you? And if it please you, may we meet again. I've high hopes for you, my lambkin.
little Calva. I'll soon birth thee anew, a sweeting, fresh and pure. My beloved, have no fear. I will hold thee. Patience. Ye will be countless born forever and ever. Upon my name is Rani the Witch. Mother's rich slumber shall not be disturbed by thee. Foul trespasser. Send word far and wide. Of the last queen of Caria, Renala of the full moon. And the majesty of the night she conjureth. Sweetings, come out from whence ye hide. There are books and light aplenty. Dither not, come out, say I, or will ye be gravestones to be better born anew? Back to learn another? Why, of course. 
Are you willing to give your glintstone key to me? My, oh my. Thank you. Thank you dearly. Now I can go back to the academy to resume my study of glintstone sorceries. And the very stars. <laughs> With you a blessing, I will depart for the Academy of Rhea Lucaria. Or perhaps one day you will pay me a visit? Who knows? I may be a decorated sorcerer by then. <laughs> I had my doubts, but my look at you. Only once before have I seen two great runes together. Look there. The fingers shudder with exuberance. Fine work, brave tarnished. The greater will is pleased. You have earned the right to become Elden Lord. Now, seek the Erd Tree and an audience with Queen Marika to become Elden Lord and restore the Golden Order. The fingers expect as much from you as they do, young Gideon. Take this, a token of farewell. Now, go forth. Become Elden Lord. Ah, you again, is it? The recusant sent a lucky. Can you believe they invited me to join them? Now, after what they did, I can scarcely believe it myself. Do they think me a fool? You might be surprised to learn I took them up on the offer. Then I only had to ask. The location of the recusant hideout. It's on Mount Gelmir, found off the old road that leads west from the town of Windmills. That's where they hide. The manor on the peak. Just you wait, wretched recusants. You'll rue the day you insulted my name by laying hands on Lanya. The tale of House Hoslo is told in blood, after all. I don't believe we've met. I'm known as D. I hunt down those who live in death and weed their death route. Heed my warning. Those who live in death should be left well alone. All the more should you spy a mariner among their number, unless you wish to lay down your life in vain. Dee is an old friend. We found ourselves journeying together for a time, bound by our exploration of death. But our paths have since diverged, never again to cross. Though that's hardly an uncommon fate for two friends. Ah, oh, yes. I wonder if you've met my foster father. He's in his study. The room enters guarding just over there. If you haven't already, I advise you introduce yourself. Father is leader of the Round Table. I'm sure talking to him will be worth your while. I understand you've been speaking to Nefeli. She's my daughter. I took her in when she lost the guidance of Grace. Though a mere axe-wielding barbarian, her youthful credulity suited my purposes. So I put her to work. Do not hesitate to employ her. Should her services benefit you? Despite her looks, she is more than capable in the press of battle. to a man's personal belongings, huh? You scheming little thief! The gods demand repentance! Cough up your coin! All of it! Wait, wait, please! I, I surrender! White flag and all! Come round, have you? <laughs> I knew you would. You're a man of real.
reason. True and true. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, what do you know? You're tarnished, like me. Now, now, how did I get that wrong? I took you for a demi-human or some such. <laughs> An innocent mistake, I assure you. Well, water under the bridge. Now we're squared up. How about we play nice from now on? I'm Patches. Patches the untethered. Tarnished like you, only free-spirited. Nomadic, you might say. Only for now, those retired soldiers turned bandits. And they're paying for my gruel. In exchange for my, well, showing them the ropes. But honestly, this looting racket is bloody terrifying. Frankly, I'm ready to wash my hands clean. Maybe set up a legitimate shop. So don't be a stranger. I'll be ready to wheel and deal come next time. <laughs> well, look at you. We don't receive many visitors. I presume you are uh, tarnished? What brings you here? Oh, pardon me. It's hardly my place to ask, is it? I am E.G. A blacksmith who once served the Karian royals. An old codger who refuses to retire his rusty hammer. So here I am, still quietly plying my trade on this spot. Perhaps you'd like a display? These bones are old. But still able. Oh, when I'm absorbed in my smithing, I lose sight of all else. If you come too close, I'm apt to cause you harm. I am, after all, terribly large compared to you, Tarnished. You don't know how hard it is not to break anything while I work. Again we cross paths. I believe I said my name was Rena when last we met. It pleaseth me to see Torrent hale and hearty, but tarnished. What business hast thou here? I have no memory of inking thee an invitation. Intriguing. Then mayhaps fate hath steered thee to this reunion. Hmm. Wilt thou enter into my service? I am the witch Rani. I stole death long ago, and search now for the dark path, that I might one day upend the whole of it, and rid the world of all that came before. Well, has that roused thy interest? I heard a rare sword. Not many would have accepted the offer. But I require as much of those under my command. I anticipate good work from thee. Good. Then I ask we proceed with haste. There is, in my service, a half-woven warrior by the name of Blythe. I would have thee join him in searching for the hidden treasure of Nokron, the Eternal City. I have called for Blythe to greet thee below. Take from him the particulars. Ah, and there wilt thou find E.G., my war counselor, and Salavis, preceptor in the sorcerous arts also. Heed not their peculiarities. Feel secure in gaining from them what advantage thou canst. 
I'm sure the others will be doing just the same. Speak with the three who await thee below. Thou needst not indulge them unduly. But they too wish to appraise thy worth. It hath been a passing long time since a newcomer entered my service, after all. Oh, so you were the one. Lady Rani has explained everything. Again, I am Yiji, the Karian royal family's dedicated blacksmith and Lady Rani's war counselor. I am told that you are searching for Nokron with Blythe. I will give you whatever guidance I can and pray for your success. Hmm. I heard about you. Good to finally meet. Name's Blythe. Sworn sword to Mistress Rani. Glad to have you aboard. Well, getting right to business. I'm situated in Lingrave right now. The eternal city of Nokron lies somewhere at the bottom of this land. I'm planning to go below through the well in the Mistwood. See if I can't find the road to Nokron from there. I see. You must be Rani's new hireling. Yes, yes, I've heard all about you. I am Selvis, preceptor in the sorcerous arts. I don't know what it is the mistress sees in a provincial tarnished like you, but since we have the misfortune of serving the same lady, I ask that you kindly try not to drag us all down with you. I reside in another tower close by. Come and pay me a visit. Should you wish to be of actual service to Mistress Rani, if it were up to me, I wouldn't waste my time on the likes of you. But who am I to stand against the wishes of my lady? Well, well, you took me at my word. Did you not realize I was merely being polite? Oh, you provincials never cease to amaze. Uh, I suppose you're here now. Perhaps I'll give you something to do. I'd like you to find a woman called Nefeli to administer a potion. Even you can do that much, can't you? Now I shall hand over the potion in question. Find Nefeli and ensure she drinks it. I expect glad tidings, and soon. Secrets lie with me, not a one. Oh, please leave me be. Wait then. You're not one of them. Well, what a relief. <laughs> oh, goodness me. I am Albus and Albinoric. As you can see, we're finished. The whole village is finished. The curse mongers have destroyed everything. No one that remains has their wits about them. I beg you. Would you look after this medallion? You must keep it out of the curse mongers' hands. And if you should meet the young Albinoric Latena, then please give it to her. A chosen land awaits us, Albinorics. The medallion is the key that leads to the city. 
It's only a quaint treasure for we who cannot make the journey. But for dear Latena, it is needed to fulfill her purpose. Foul tarnished. What do you want? I told the all hearing brute that I possess no such medallion. Or have you come to take more from me? Was my other half not enough? So old Albus entrusted his medallion to you. <sighs> then I have no choice but to trust that this was his dying will. Let's try again. I'm Latena. An Albanoric, the same as old Albus. My apologies for my coarse words earlier. I presume the worst. Seeing that you are another tarnished like that all-hearing brute. I hope that you will forgive me. Hmm. The medallion's better off in your hands anyway. Would you consider doing me a great service? I must go back. There is something I must do. Even if I must say farewell to my wolf, Lobo. Will you show me the way? To the land of Mikola's Halig Tree. If you accept, I would gladly apprise you of the whereabouts of the medallion's other half. And they say the other half of the medallion is beyond the Forbidden Lands, north of the Earth Tree, in Castle Sol, on the mountain tops of the Giants, accessible by the Grand Lift of Rold. Then I suppose it's time. Farewell, Lobo. My faithful wolf. My better half. I will go with the tarnished. So that our journey will not have been in vain. Forgive me, Lobo. Call upon me when needed. And I will fight at your side. Oh. It's you. Well... What do you make of it? What's happened to this village? I witnessed a sight much the same in my infancy. The oppression of the weak. Murder and pillage unchecked. A waking nightmare made by men. But this time, I'm a woman grown. And though the suffering cannot be undone, I can still mete out justice. Justice to the oppressors. Let the scars I carve remind them. I am Nefeli Lu, warrior. Ah, you've already heard. Indeed, it seemed the whelp harbored suspicions, so I had no further use for her. Honestly, what's a man to do? A determined plebeian is more wicked than an omen horn, quite frankly. I suspect that's just what the Queen wants. A dose of ambition to incite the tarnished. Is that portion what I think it is? Bloody Celibus. I suppose he's up to something again. Oh, I won't interfere. You go ahead and do what you must. The round table has no code to speak of. But, I ask you this. Are you really going to do the bidding of that twisted dolly botherer? Or would you rather hand that potion to me and see if we can't get one over on the bastard? Go, you go and see Salamis, but don't give anything away. Just tell him that you tricked your mark into drinking the potion, as planned. Despite knowing next to bloody nothing, he's so far up his own ass he won't suspect a thing. His inevitable display of arrogance will certainly be a sight to behold. Ah, so you made Nefeli drink the potion. Well done. You are a touch more useful than I had thought. Very well. Then you shall have your gift. Knowledge of the sorcerous arts and of the tutelage of the great preceptor Salavis. I doubt much of it will lay within the grasp of a mere tarnished, but... If you put your mind to it, perhaps you won't embarrass our lady. You wish to begin right this moment? Well, 
Your impatience, though boorish, is understandable. Let's have at it. Hmm. Then perhaps something was amiss with it. It's concocted from the finest ingredients, but perhaps I should review the recipe. I may have expected too much of her to begin with. See you. Apologies, mate. But I don't have much to report. I can see bloody Nokron right above me. But I'm absolutely stumped. I've tried all the gateways, to no avail. Perhaps it's time to ask Celebus. And recall that spiteful little rat acting like he knew something. Let's give him a squeeze. Show him just how sharp my teeth are. The task was left to you and the mongrel, was it not? Not only are you incompetent, but shameless to boot. Well, there's no helping it. Now's as good a time as any. I'll let you in on it. There's a glintstone sorcerer by the name of Selen in Limgrave. She owes me for the help I gave her when she was expelled from the academy. I asked her to look into the matter some time ago. I'll write you a letter of introduction. Go ask her. Tarnished, are we? No wonder you should turn up here. I am Selen, her sorcerer, quite plainly. Why are you here? I dare say your proclivities are far from ideal. Oh well, perhaps nurture will defy nature. With a bit of luck. But one must choose one's masters wisely. I was exiled from the Academy of Rea Lucaria. As a reviled, apostate witch. Do you still wish to learn from me? Very well. You are now my protege in Glinstone sorcery. But I refuse to coddle. Or cast kind words. Never. Anticipate grievances, young apprentice. Celebus is not a name I ever wanted to hear again, but fine. If it will help you, my apprentice, I offer my knowledge. The stars alter the fate of the Carian royal family, and the fate of your mistress, Rani. But long ago, General Radan challenged the swirling constellations, and in a crushing victory, arrested their cycles. Now he is the force that repulses the stars. If General Radan were to die, the stars would resume their movement, and so too would Rani's destiny. Ah, you have returned. What is it? A god in truth. But after the Elton Ring's shattering, she was imprisoned in the Erd Tree. A grim punishment for shattering the Order, despite her godhood. <sighs> the fingers speak. Marika's trespass demanded a heavy sentence. But even in shackles, she remains a god and the vision's vessel. Confer great runes to become Elden Lord and join Queen Marika as her consort. The fingers have willed it so. Now you may go. Ah, I have been waiting for your return. I've decided to leave the Round Table Hold. I'm off in search of a noble scholar known as the Gold Mask to beg his instruction. We may not meet again for some time. If there's any incantations you wish to learn, 
Now's the moment. Those who live in death should be left well alone. All the more should you spy a mariner among their number. Another fool who won't listen to reason, eh? But with a prowess for weed in death route. Hmm. How would you like to earn the strength of beasts? If you're inclined to haunt more of those who live in death and weed their death route, then I'll introduce you to Garank, the beast clergyman. I have a matter of my own to attend to, and the beast himself wishes for someone to take my place. What say you? I've marked the location for you of a hidden gateway. It will lead you to Garank, the beast clergyman. Spoken echoes linger here. Words of Queen Marika, who vanished long ago. If you wish, I will share them with you. My lord, and thy warriors, I divest each of thee of thy grace. With thine eyes dimmed, ye will be driven from the lands between. Ye will wage war in a land afar, where ye will live and die. Well, perhaps that might serve you in lieu of a maiden's guidance. Pleasure to see you, a pleasure indeed. I am Gari, a great sage, in my day anyway. I'd hoped to ask a favor when one of your ilk came along. A strapping young tarnished, able to cross the scarlet swamp of Aeonia. Don't fret, I'll provide fine recompense. Should you accept, I will teach you the secret of Celia, the town you see there. I need your help to heal a certain young girl. Her name is Millicent. You will find her beyond Celia, resting at the church atop the cliff, stricken by the rotting sickness. 
the rotting sickness that afflicts Millicent has no cure. When the Earth Tree flourished, even the demigods could not stave off its effects, despite their nigh godhood. But Millicent's suffering can be ameliorated. For this, you are to find a certain needle. Seek the deep, scarlet swamp of Aeonia outside Celia's bounds. The needle, made from unalloyed gold, is lost somewhere there. As promised, I've detailed the secret of Celia right here. Go on. It's yours. Now let me have a look at the needle. Hmm. Hmm. Well, well, this is a marvel indeed. The work of a true artisan. A meticulous, bold craftsman who grasps the essence of life. Can you give me some time with this? As well made as it is, it won't be much use snapped in half, will it? The needle is repaired. Now it will forestall the rotting sickness, I'm sure. Will you give it to the girl, Millicent? I will reward you in kind. Millicent rests at the church atop the cliff beyond Celia, the town yonder. Tended to by the witless pests who worship her, or rather her rotting sickness, as a god. A wretched fate, indeed. The poor girl, she never wished for any of this. Do you find it peculiar that I would show such concern for the girl? Well, I'm the one that found her. A mere babe in the swamp of Aeonia. She is one of my dear daughters. But the rotting sickness erodes one's memory. I doubt that she remembers the first thing about me. Oh, I must be getting old. I didn't always worry so much. <laughs> Who's there? Well, it matters not. If you are wise, you will leave immediately. My flesh writhes with scarlet rot. It is a curse. Not to be meddled with by man. To quell the scarlet rot. But how? <laughs> Never mind. I've decided I would rather trust you than simply continue to spoil from within. Would you mind averting your eyes for a moment?
Well, that was easier than expected. But, but why do I feel so... Starskirt Radan holds Rani's fate in stasis. But once he's out of the way, it will spring back into motion. So now, we stand against the demigod once known as the strongest of them all. The way ahead is pleasingly simple. We fight, sword and fang. Ah, you came. How delightful. Indeed, I thought I might find you here. By the by, do you know for whom this festival is being held? Well, it is none other than General Radan himself. To think, I could face a great champion of the Shattering, a demigod in the flesh. Oh, God. In truth, I quiver at the thought. Such is his frightful repute. But... The fear simply assures me the ordeal is worth undertaking. Be sure to get a good vantage, my friend. I, Iron Fist Alexander, do hereby vow to unflinchingly brave this ordeal. Are you good and prepared, young chum? The festival begins. Before we begin, allow me to paint you the full picture. General Radan is cursed ever to wander. Eaten from the inside by Melania's scarlet rot, his wits are long gone. Now he gathers the corpses of former friends and foes alike, gorging on them like a dog. at the sky. But now, we must make merry. Oh, gathering of champions! The revels begin! The celebration of war! The Radan Festival!
good. I was waiting for you. Oh, what a sick way to fight, eh? The glory of the clash is shared. By Radan. And you. And how <laughs> did you see that afterwards? A falling star right before our eyes. I can't fathom how Radan was holding back something of that scale. He was a living legend if ever I saw one. And the path has now been cleared. To Nokra. Where Rani's fate will be decided. Let's meet where the falling star bit the earth. We'll take up our souls once more. For Mistress Rani. Ah, hello there. Well, it was a battle marvelously fought. You are well and truly a champion, friend. I, on the other hand, am nothing but a croc. One hit was all it took to crack me, and for my insides to come spilling out. After that, I... I hid like a coward, and as such, I can hardly stand to face one such as you. I hoped to see you again. My apologies for when last we met. I fainted before I could even thank you. Everything is as you said. Since inserting the needle, the scarlet rot has ceased to writhe. Even the nightmares have abated. And now, though I can scarcely believe it myself, I can move as I please. Not that I could ever truly repay you, but I would like you to have this by way of thanks. A token though it is. I'm considering leaving on a journey with the needle buried in my flesh. I've started to recall, but dimly, my destiny. It's all thanks to you. My name is Millicent. I pray fate permits us meet again. I am pleased to see you again. Would you like me to hold you once more? The blessing is still aflame in your breast, dear. Would you like to be held regardless? for the original owner to have it back, if you wouldn't mind. I did a very precious thing. It must have a special place in the owner's heart. Ah, hello there. What can I do for you? How did you get your hands on that dagger? Well, that hardly matters. I know very well whose dagger it is. Why don't I return it to them for you? Good work bringing this to me.
'twas thee, not blithe it seemeth. Even in my slumber I sensed it. It is in thy possession, is it not? The hidden treasure of Nokron. My thanks. Finally all the pieces are in place. Soon must I begin my journey. Upon the dark path only I may tread. Ah, but before I leave, I shall entrust thee with this. My thanks for thy sterling efforts. A strange gift, perhaps. But a rare sort such as thee would welcome it, I'm sure. I am certain now. Fate steered us to our reunion. I must thank Torrent, too, for his part. You may leave now. It was but brief. But thou gavest me fine service. to the capital, Laendel, to the east of the Altus Plateau, at the foot of the Erd Tree. The Two Fingers will deny your passage no longer. You may be our best hope. Find your way to the Elden Ring. Oh, my apologies for that nasty business. Ensher got rather ahead of himself, it seems. As his master, I'd like to express my regret. But now, Ensha is slain and gone. Finished. Forevermore. You've met Garank, I take it. Then owing to our duties shared, we are now comrades in arms. I think you've earned this. The power of the Golden Order to aid the hunt of those who live in death. But you know, the piteous fellow hiding away on the balcony. He was a formidable spellblade in times past. Don't let his easy air deceive you. He was wise beyond his years, stout of heart and clear of mind. No more though. You see him now, ravaged by thorns, muttering and rambling, like he's half dead already. I can't stomach to watch. Take well the lesson, friend. That's how you end up when seduced by those who live in death. When grace is sullied, it rots people from the inside. Breaks them. I that I might put this crooked land to rights, following only the guidance of the great Elden Ring. Those who live in death fall outside the principles of the Golden Order. Their mere existence sullies the guidance of gold, tainting its truth. And so it is, the vermin must be exterminated. Down to the very last. Greetings. Are you here for spirit tuning? I need to warn you about something. A little while ago, someone started lurking in the wing on the opposite side of the round table. And I can hear, from all the way over there, the howling and wailing of spirits in fear of a curse. I can even hear the repulsive twisted malice in itself. A plethora of spirits in an unceasing cacophony. I can't even imagine. How much suffering inflicted to who knows how many souls. Not even the grafting caused anything like this to happen. You should keep your distance. I know you're strong, but please. Ah, you. Please, leave me be. It's pathetic, I know, but I... I need to think. It's like... It's true. My father cast me out for indulging my emotions. Forgetting the mission. Punishment for offing his pawns. Father. Mother. 
Lord Gideon has offered me guidance all my life. I would have done anything for him, to place him on the throne of Elden Lord. And yet I, though it was not my intent, I betrayed him. And I can no longer trust him father to think he'd order his men to enact such tragedy. Where is the justice he purports in that? He once told me that if he became Elden Lord, he would never allow the downtrodden to be cheated ever again. Was he simply lying to me? No, no, no. How could I say that? Father has always given me his guidance. And now... I've lost it. Is anybody there? Someone who might be interested in rescuing the great Kenneth Height, servant to the true order and celebrated repudiator of the false. Oh, Ertry, grant me succor. Ah, you've come to lend me your aid, have you? Well, that's, that's very kind, but, um, no. No, the help is very much appreciated, even from a tarnished. Despite appearances, nobility is no prerequisite to serving the true order. You might have heard of me, Kenneth Height. Next in line is the rightful ruler of Limgrave, young tarnished. I would have a boon of you. I want you to take back my fort. It lies to the south, beyond the Mistwood. A knight commander from Stormvale took it, a fool! and plumb mad to boot, simply obsessed with blood. What are you waiting for? A kiss goodbye? My fort lies to the south, beyond the Mistwood. Take it back for me. Oh, I see. You wish to know the reward? Fret not. The great Kenneth Height is known for his considerable largesse. The celebrations will be lavish indeed upon the dawn of my fort's retrieval. waiting for you with bated breath. Did you manage to recapture my fort? Oh, excellent news. Just wonderful. And the knight's dead to boot. Well done, my friend. Well done indeed. I knew I was right to trust you. Now, here's your reward, as promised. Go ahead. It's all yours. Right then. Time for me to head to the fort. I've much to do. First, I'll have to re-establish communication with the Demi-Humans. What's that look? You don't believe me? Well, under the Erd Tree, co-mingling with the Demi-Humans is made possible. Even the Vulgar shall not be left behind under the rule of true order. Which is why I, Kenneth Height, next in line as the rightful ruler of Limgrave, have sworn to uphold it. Just you watch, my friend. Just you watch. Oh. Hello again. Something about this place felt familiar to me. So I decided to pay a visit. Hoping to find someone here. But I've only found emptiness. Perhaps before my departure... I needed someone to say farewell to. 
Well, never mind that. I must focus on my journey. For which I have you to thank. I must stay strong. Spoken echoes of Queen Marika linger here as well. Shall I share them with you? The Earth Tree governs all. The choice is thine. Become one with the Order, or divest thyself of it. To wallow at the fringes, a powerless upstart. is close only a little further till the foot of the earth tree and the accord is fulfilled it takes me back i was born at the foot of the earth tree 
where mother gave me my purpose. Though now, everything is lost to me. I have to ascertain for myself the reason for which I live, burned and bodiless. Ah, look who we have here. How delightful to meet a familiar face, even after departing the round table hold. I've been doing some learning of my own since then, actually, and will happily pass it along to you. I suppose he'll be closer to the Earth Tree. The path ahead might be perilous, but tread it I shall. Since departing the Round Table Hold, I've come to understand, in my solitude, how little it is I truly know. to be doing well very good well then would you like to learn an incantation do from your description it can be no other than the gold mask himself of course of course i knew he would be close by bless the golden order and its benevolent rays and to you too my sincerest thanks We rarely receive visitors to the Volcano Manor without invitation. Fascinating. And not unlike another guest we had long ago. So tarnished. Have you ever harbored doubts about the burden of grace and the dogmatic ramblings of the fingers? If you have, why not join the Volcano Manor and fight with us, rise with us against the Erd Tree? You now you belong to the Volcano Manor family. The drawing room lies down the hall. Make yourself comfortable. I am Tanith, the proprietress of this house. An honor to have you. A pleasure to meet you, Brave Tarnished. I am Raya, the scout. Very pleased to welcome you to the Volcano Manor. 
under Lady Tanith's guidance. May you tread the path of valor. Brave tarnished under Lady Tanith. You. What in heaven's name are you doing here? The Volcano Manor is a pit of recusants who spit at grace and hunt our own kind. I hope you understand the weight of my words. I thought you were tarnished bred by virtue. Perhaps playing that part led you to your doubts, I wonder. But know that the path you walk is blasphemy and leads only to a miserable death. Before you consider hunting any of your own kind, think on that. Ah. Oh, I... It's, it's you, is it? Well, nice to see you again. So you've been invited as well, I see. Then we're comrades in arms henceforth. You watch my back, and I'll watch yours. Yes. I, um... I can tell. You're wondering about Lanya. Well, you see, I... After much internal debate, I've come to realize... Revenge is not the answer. According to Lady Tanith, I've got the stuff of champions. And champions, ironic as it is, are oft forced to walk a tainted path. It hit me like a bolt from the blue, that my former thoughts were simple naivety. Of course my heart weeps for Lanya. That unfortunate incident was a cruel twist of fate indeed. But succumbing to the pain and sadness caused won't make me a champion, will it? Lanya knows this, I'm certain. Fate has laid hard roads for us both, but such is true of any road trod by champions. I always resented these hands, their pale complexion, a far cry from any warriors, the shame of House Hoslo, but that won't be the case for long. They'll be darkened by grit once I've set out on the path of champions. The tale of House Hoslo is told in blood after all. Joined the manor, huh? I don't believe it. Didn't think you had it in you. All good, though. We're on the same side now. We'll do good work together. Oh, and of course, we can do business, if you like. Hatches Emporium at the Volcano Manor. Especially for you. Oh. I always hated the gibberish about Lost Grace and the laughable Two Fingers. I thought I could lend a hand in unmasking the charade. Not to mention, Tanith has always made me curious. I guess her master must really be something, because she's pretty damn smug about it. Even after announcing her blasphemous ambitions, she still stands proud. I've never seen a woman quite like her. Did you read the letter left for you? That is the task the Volcano Manor desires you enact. You will be compensated once the deed is done. Good luck. If you are loath to hunt your own kin, so be it. But you must leave this house at once. This is a war against the Erd Tree. We have no place for the meek, nor the luxury of keeping clean hands. completed your task. I am pleased. Now you are a recusant true, and a full-fledged member of the Volcano Manor. This is your reward, as promised. Never forget that the recusant fights to tread the path of the champion. The way is tainted, but for this very reason, 
It is the true path to Valor. Have you ever heard any strange sounds here at the manor? Something beyond the walls? Like breathing or slithering scales? Oh, fie, what am I saying? It just is impossible. I must be tired. Someone please kill him. That horrendous serpent. Traitor Rikard. Mm -hmm. You're tarnished. Here to put the demigods to the sword. Then please... Kill the Great Serpent. The one that devoured Praetor Rikard. I left the Serpent slaying spear in the Lord's Chamber. Worthy tarnished. Brandish the spear and run him through. The Great Serpent. That unspeakable monstrosity. Pray to Rikard's ambitions, though blasphemous. Marked him a worthy sovereign, but they were reduced to gluttonous depravity once he gave himself to the serpent. Whatever that thing is, it is no longer Praetor Rikard. Someone must kill him to spare him and his ambitions from further dishonor. Worthy tarnished, I left the serpent slaying spear in the Lord's chamber. It is the only thing that can kill that horror. Run it through. The great serpent, that unspeakable monstrosity. Ah, hello. What impeccable timing. This is for you. You're new here at the manor, but if you complete the request, you can improve your standing. Relax. We're old friends. Time's come to pass the torch, right? Go on, break a leg then. to Patches Emporium. You, Are you certain? No, it's quite all right. Fine work indeed. I'll give Tanith the news. Have some rest by all means. I see you've performed another task for us. Here is your usual reward. Please, take it. Now, Perhaps the time has come to tell you of the true ruler of this manor, Lord Rikard. The Erd Tree blessed the Tarnished with grace, but it was all too meager in the face of the enormity of their task. The Tarnished were forced to scavenge, squabbling for crumbs, like the shard bearers vying for power in the wake of the shattering. Our Lord, indignant, has refused to scurry about, fighting over what miserly scraps they allow us. If the Erd Tree, and indeed the very gods, would debase us so, then we are willing to raise the banner of resistance, even if it means heresy. We at the Volcano Manor 
Under Lord Rikard, have sworn no rest until it is done. If you follow this heroic path, one day the Lord will see you. The Lord's visits with our champions are always a spectacle. It cannot come a day too soon. <laughs> Ah, we meet yet again. Thanks to you, I have become acquainted with the noble Gold Mask himself, and taken my place by his side, as you can see. Have no fear. I will still teach you incantations as before, though we must do so quietly, such that we not disturb the great master's cogitation. Then while I frantically attempt to record his wisdom, the movement of his finger, and though I am yet to comprehend even the daintiest morsel of his wisdom, I know that this, this is my life's calling. The Golden Order has bestowed me, talentless as I am, the great duty of documentarian. Oh, Lampkin, so pleased you're here. I'm glad that you're enjoying my gift. Hmm. I knew it from the very start. You have a taste for noble blood. <clears throat> I wish to anoint you a proper inductee. A knight to serve Luminary Moog, the Lord of Blood, and establish a new dynasty. Luminary Moog has strength, vision, and of course, love. So, what do you say? my lambkin. Now, take this for your final trial. Soak the cloth with a maiden's blood. Normally, this ritual would involve killing one's own maiden and recanting the wisdom of the two fingers. But since you are maidenless, the blood of anyone's maiden will do. Thank you kindly for giving the needle to Millicent. Now she too can begin her journey and stare her fate straight in the eye. You've been a saint through and through. As thanks, I vow to impart to you my knowledge of the lost sorceries of the Selians, descendants of the Eternal. Indeed, Millicent did visit this hovel of a home. It seems the memories eaten away by the rotting sickness yet remain, but faintly. However, she has no need of me anymore. No, she must embark on her journey and stare her fate in the eye. I mustn't impede. As I've aged, I've found the best way to aid the young is to be forgotten. Finally, it is returned to its rightful place, the stolen Hallowbrand of the exalted noble. And now, I must bid you goodbye as well, though I ask you deliver this message to the Round Table Hold. I am Via, Deathbed Companion, Hark Round Table. Disturb not the death of Godwin. The exalted, we who humbly live in death, live in waiting to one day welcome our Lord. What right does anyone have to object? Our Lord will rise, the Lord of the many and the meek.
I knew you would come. What is it you intend? To deny us and our ways, like the dogmatic brutes of the Golden Order. I am the guardian of those who live in death. They call me a foul and rotten witch. Yet you still wish to be held by me? wheel wound of the centipede. Godwin's Hallowbrand has since been recovered at the Round Table Hold. But there is another Hallowbrand out there somewhere, and I must find it before the time comes we receive our Lord. Where well, another exists, another mark in the shape of the half wheel wound of the centipede, and I must find it. Before the time comes, we receive our Lord. My hands will be dirtied once more by the deed. Will you still let me hold you, even then? The how did you... Oh, my utmost thanks. With this, Godwin can take his rightful place as first of the dead, and claim a second, illustrious life. You are my... our true champion and though i can't be of any use to you can i hold you tight if only for a moment and it will surely stir within me the new life of the golden prince and first dead of the demigods as the rune of those who live in death. Please, do one thing for me. Brandish this child, my rune, and take for yourself the throne. Stay the persecution of those who live in death by becoming our Elden Lord. Dogged fellow, aren't we? Or is it merely thy habit to talk to dolls? Fine. Fine. I hadn't expected any soul to recognize me in this guise. But now the cat is out the bag. I cannot allow thee thy freedoms. Perform for me a service as recompense. Eliminate the baleful shadows which prowl these lands. The name of Rani the Witch is already sullied by thee. I will not brook disobedience in this matter.
was more of a challenge than I envisioned. Now I can finally stand before them. This is farewell, my dear. Tell Bly and E.G. I love them. <laughs>
was thee who would become my lord. Perhaps I needn't have warned thee. I am pleased, however. Thou art a fitting choice. I go now to the night sky. It is there I shall find mine order. I bid thee travel the path of the Lord. And once all is done, we shall see each other once more. I take it thou hast noticed. I shouldn't be surprised. I thought I might expound a little further upon the order I envision. Mine will be an order not of gold, but the stars and moon of the chill night. I would keep them far from the earth beneath our feet. As it is now, life and souls and order are bound tightly together. But I would have them at a great remove and have the certainties of sight, emotion, faith, and touch all become impossibilities, which is why I would abandon this soil with mine order. Wouldst thou come to me even now, my one and only lord? Oh, there you are. Good of you to drop by. Have you heard? Lady Rani has departed on her journey. Along the dark path of Empyrean, from Rena's rise, as she calls it, it would not have been possible without you. As Lady Rani's war counselor, and moreover, her childhood warden, I express my deepest gratitude. You, and only you, were Lady Rani's true champion. How did he break free from his cell? No. More importantly, Lyth became a curse that plagued Lady Rani, yet even in madness, gave himself to her. I made a grave misjudgment, and I thought myself a capable war counselor. I'll catch up with you soon enough, Lyth. When I do, I only hope You'll accept my apology. Ah. We meet again. In truth, it's been smooth sailing for me. The Scarlet Rot has stilled since last we met. As such, I've been able to continue my journey. Though rather vexingly, I realized that if I still had my sword arm, I could have aided you in battle. Now I'm tracing the path Melania took after unleashing the power of the Scarlet Rot during her battle with General Radan in the Caled Wilds. I should like to meet her. This vanished woman. I think she's in the north, in the lands that lie beyond the Erd Tree.
giving me this arm. I thank you. I am in your debt yet again. I think. If the arm serves well enough, it might be possible for me to wield a sword again. My utmost thanks for bringing me to the base of the Erd Tree. Here, I can govern my own movement, and thus, the accord is fulfilled. I shall depart to ascertain the purpose I was given. Farewell. I shall leave Torrent, and the power to turn runes into strength, here, with you. I wish you luck in realizing your ambition. You have fought long and hard. I have no doubt you will become Elden Lord. May you take the throne.
graceless, tarnished. What is thy business with these thrones? Ah, Godric the Golden. The twin prodigies, Mikola and Melania. General Radan, Praetor Rikard, Luna Princess Rani. Willful traitors, all. Thy kind are all of a piece. Villagers, emboldened by the flame of ambition. Have it writ upon thy meager grave. Felled by King Morgoth, last of all kings. Tree wards off all who deign approach. We are, we are all forsaken. <laughs> None may claim the title of Elder and Lord. Thy deeds shall be met. Just as I. <sighs> Hello again, old friend. Allow me a moment to converse with you. You were unable to enter the Erd Tree, no? Prevented by the mantle of barbs. The thorns are impenetrable. A husk of the Ur Tree's being that spurns all that exists without. The only way to stand before the Elden Ring and become the Elden Lord is to pass the thorns. My purpose serves to aid in that very act. So I'd like you to undertake a new journey with me to the Flame of Ruin, far above the clouds. Upon the snowy mountain tops of the giants, then I can set the Erd Tree aflame and guide you down the path to becoming Elden Lord. <laughs> Master, 
Whatever is the matter, please, I implore you, continue. Continue your reflections, your rhythms. I must be the one to record them. What matters this issue of Radigan, really? The Erd Tree, heart of the Golden Order, lies before our very eyes. Why must these qualms come to you now? We were on the very cusp. Oh, was that you? Sorry, I hardly noticed. I'm a little shaken since the Master ceased his movements. The, while still a precise calculus, the rhythms grew increasingly wild until he simply ceased. Now the Master is facing quite the puzzle. The Golden Order is founded on the principle that Marika is the one true god. However, the name of Marika's second husband, King Consort Radigan, also appeared. Who exactly was Radigan? The Master is stumped. His finger has remained still ever since Radigan's name was discovered. Curse my mediocre mind. The Master only has me. And here I fail him. It's good to see your enthusiasm. Indeed, I will happily take it off your hands. What on earth did you do to the Master? Well, not that I'm complaining. Master's finger moves again, resuming his cogitation. More than good enough for me. I haven't the words to thank you. So I'd like to pass this on to you instead. A glimpse into the heart of the Golden Order. Documented by yours truly. Or at least... Such is all I can interpret from the rhythm and calculus of his finger. How would such a thing even have been possible, I wonder? Sadly, I cannot comprehend it myself. Do you have a fuller understanding of the matter? Oh. <sighs> well, either way, I can continue my documentation. In truth, it matters very little whether I understand the Master's thoughts or not. I am merely his scribe. It is my sole and unwavering purpose. Well, you managed to return. You know what this means. The urge tree has burned you. The fingers remain still, shaken by this turn of events. They are. Busy consulting the greater will. When they are finished, the fingers will again offer their guidance. But thousands, if not tens of thousands, of moons must first pass. No matter for me, but you. How will you ever manage to wait? My, oh my. That is not the domain of mere men. The burning of the Erd Tree is the first cardinal sin. And you say you seek the power of the Rune of Death too? The Rune of Death goes by two names. The other is Destined Death. 
The forbidden shadow plucked from the Golden Order upon its creation. Uh, unleashing the rune now would be unthinkable. The fingers would never permit it. Nor would the greater will. Mm. But here we are. The fingers dormant, severing our link to the greater will. The realm and all life in ruins. Impossible events transpire beyond the ken of the fingers. Who is to say that the cardinal sin must be cardinal forever? Go on. Finish the job. Take the course you deem most worthy. Only the smoldering flame in the great forge of the giants on the highest peak in the lands between can burn the earth tree. But special kindling is required to reignite the flame. For the flame to burn the earth tree, a sacrifice is needed of one who envisions the flame and can lead you to the rune of death. Uh, you. What is it? He'll need to find the Grand Lift of Rold, beyond the Forbidden Region. Or go if you would. Take no heed of Cardinal Sin. The two fingers lost their purpose a long, long time ago. The Nicola of the Halig Tree, the Unalloyed, his twin, Melania, the undefeated swordswoman, Luna Princess Rani, daughter to Renala, and the one only known as the Lord of Blood. Rani is said to have cast aside her great rune, so here at the Hold, we seek the whereabouts of the remaining three shard bearers. If you should learn anything of these matters, I'll trade your findings for a hidden treasure or a long-lost rite known only to me. We both desire to stand before the Elden Ring and become Elden Lord. As such, I hope we are compelled to work together.
Think not of the kindling. I shall see to that. All I ask of you is to make the journey to the snowy mountain tops of the giants, far above the clouds. I know I'm asking you to commit a cardinal sin, but it must be done to reach the path beyond, and that is the path I wish to travel. to see you. I can't believe you've come all this way. Are the rhythms and calculus of the Master's finger betray a suspicion of the holism of the Golden Order? A conceit, I am afraid, that cannot be overlooked. Oh, but how could this be? I dread to even entertain the possibility. But somehow, I cannot cast aside my doubts about the Master. Tell me, have I simply lost my head? Only, if the Master were true to the Golden Order, why would he think to breach this forbidden mount of fire? I'll dispel these fearsome thoughts. I want to place my trust in you, to be your scribe. <laughs> There is something I'd like to say. My purpose was given to me by my mother, but now I act of my own volition. I have set my heart upon the world that I would have, regardless of my mother's designs. I won't allow anyone to speak ill of that, not even you.
We're almost there. The flame of ruin lies just ahead. I'm glad it was you I traveled with. I must tender my thanks to Torrent, too. Thank you, Torrent. Please continue to lend your aid. Till the end. Spoken echoes of Queen Marika linger here as well. Shall I share them with you? Then hark, brave warriors. Hark, my Lord Godfrey. We commend your deeds. Guidance hath delivered ye through each ordeal to the place ye stand. Put the giants to the sword and confine the flame atop the mount. Let a new epoch begin. An epoch glistening with life. Brandish the Elden Ring for the age of the Erd Tree.
I have long observed the lands between. This world is in dire need of repair, and death indiscriminate. Are you prepared to commit a cardinal sin? Tell me when you are fully prepared. Yet again, the arm you gave me truly is a thing of wonder. It feels just like my own. Even handling a sword. Perhaps it is foolish to say this to you of all people, but I am sure of my skill with the sword. Thus, I would have you call upon me in battle, should you ever have the need. Tarnished. What is your business here? I'm afraid this is not a guest room. What's that peculiar look upon your face? Goodness, am I still a serpent? Oh, how dreadful. How dreadful indeed. Oh, forgive my distress. I ought to be thanking you for treating me as usual. Despite this appearance, Brave Tarnished, this is my true form. My real name is Zarias. Please forgive the deception. Do understand. This duplicity is my own doing. Lady Tanith speaks no falsehoods. And the Volcano Manor is just as it seems. Lady Tanith is my mother. I am told I was born by the grace of a glorious king. That my mother cherishes this form I inhabit. I am proud of what I am. But people are cruel. If they saw my true form, they wouldn't speak to me. And so, I assume a guise when seeking new recruits. But you are not like the rest. My serpentine form and the name Zarias were secrets known only to Lady Tanith and I. Now I share the secrets with you as well. Please keep them safe from anyone else. Do the girl, Raya, with her true face. Mm. Well, if she confided in you the name Zarias, then perhaps it is not my place to speak. But as her adoptive mother, I ask of you, Please, be kind to her. Look after young Zarias. Her true visage belies the purity of her heart. Honestly, I hardly deserve the sweet child. Look at you. A recusant through and through. I knew you had it in you. Take this. A special invitation to hunt some of the first tarnished who sat at the round table hold. If you should accept, I'll next see you on the field of battle. 
Ah, it's you, is it? I'm terribly sorry. But would you mind giving me some time to myself? I haven't achieved anything at all thus far. Even though I've dirtied my hands time and time again, I'm still yet to achieve anything. Perhaps I am a fool after all. No, it's worse than that. As things stand, I've given up on the path of revenge and sullied the name of my house. What an easy mark I must have been. How did it take me so long to realize, honestly? There's just no end to my foolishness, is there? you'd soon return. I have the reward from Lady Tanith. Take it. It's yours, by right. Let us tread the path of the recusant together, till we reach the miserable death that awaits us. Um... Oh! It's you! Forgive me. My mind never ceases to churn of late. Hmm, well, I know I can trust you. I saw something slithering in the pitch black of night. It entered the room next to this one and never came out. If I'm not mistaken, it took the form of a serpent, just like me. Does the volcano manor hide some secret? that Lady Tanith has kept from me. I realize that I shouldn't impose, but if you discover anything, would you please share? She, I should have known something was wrong. The signs were clear enough. Well, Zarias has placed her trust in you. All the more reason I must tell you that some things are better left unknown. Besides, no one should be blamed for their heritage. Think about it. We are resisting the ways of the Erd Tree itself. What matters one's lineage in such a crisis? secret after all. Oh my. Lady Tanith, my own mother, has deceived me. Was I not born by the grace of a king? I remember this sense distinctly. Hmm. Funny. 
isn't it? I am certain of it. I was born inside this. It's a part of my birth, mother. You have my gratitude. Thanks to you, I am no longer afraid. I want to know how I was born and met Lady Tanith. One day, I hope to call her mother once again. This time from the bottom of my heart. May I ask your aid? Not as the manor's proprietress, but as Zarias's mother. If she discovers the answer to her question, and it causes distress, have her drink this potion. To purge that which would cause her pain. Yes, I know. My wish is a grave disrespect to her. No different than the Erd Tree's imposition. But I've no choice. It must be done. Oh. It's you. I'm afraid there is something I must tell you. I was an unwanted child. Born not of grace, but of a hideous ritual. Something that can never be accepted. Not by men. No serpents. Even Lady Tanith shouldn't accept me. I know that you have done so much for me. But I wish to ask one last kindness. Kill me. Please. I thought that I feared nothing. But this... Free me from this accursed frame. Yes, of course. You always were very kind. Delightfully sweet, and yet... <sighs> I will never be a good mother. My heart is too frail. Our Lord must have known this all along. <laughs> My meekness is all too clear. Sweet Zarias, have I earned your scorn? I see that you've stayed the path of champions. This is your usual reward. Please, take it. Perhaps you are ready. Might you see our lord? Our lord will no doubt welcome you. Another kindred spirit, treading the path of champions. Yeah. Close your eyes for a moment. I will transport you to the lord's chamber. Farewell, then. May your visit be fruitful.
very well. True then. You've defeated our Lord. No. I must thank you. Our Lord was yet weak. You have taught us that. Defeat is not the end. Our Lord is immortal and will one day rise again. Stronger. Until then, I must stay the path and do my part. I will leave the Volcano Manor before long. I suggest you do the same. I will miss these encounters. The champion who walks the tainted path shines all the more. I always was an admirer. This is farewell. Perhaps we will meet again along the path. So... You killed Rykard. I harbor you no ill will. The strong take. Such is our code. Even he was prepared to meet a wretched end when he first took blasphemy unto his very flesh. But any road, the Volcano Manor is no more. Though we may yet fulfill an old promise. We hunted our own kind and took what was theirs. And with everything in hand, the time has come to rise against the Erd Tree.
Ah, my lambkin. You've completed your final trial. And with this, you are a formal inductee. A knight who will assist Luminary Moog, the Lord of Blood, in the establishment of a new dynasty. Now, give me your finger. This noble blood will be an immutable badge of honor once it settles inside of you. Heavens, clench your teeth or something. <laughs> Never forget that feeling of agony, for it is what binds you to Luminary Moog, to all of us. <laughs> you have the sweetest scream, my lambkin. Oh, another thing. You should have this. A medal granted by the new Moguin dynasty. With the power to grant audience with Luminary Moog, I've gone out of my way to provide one to you. But you mustn't use it just yet. The meeting must wait until the Moguin dynasty commences. Luminary Moog yet slumbers beside the divinity. We must endure a little longer. Mikola. You must abide alone a while. Welcome, honored guest, to the birthplace of our dynasty.
think we'd meet in such a place? What could your purpose possibly... No. I know well enough who you are. And what I know is good enough for me. Call upon me again. In battle. Should you have the need. I'm searching for a fort to the north of the ruins. I heard the master of the fort was given a medallion that allowed him to visit the Halig tree. Indeed, I believe that is where Melania will be found. The Halig tree is hidden somewhere in these northern lands.
again we meet. I can only surmise our purposes are aligned. In which case, allow me to explain myself. I am of Melania's blood, but in what capacity I know not. I could be sister, daughter, or an offshoot. Whatever the case, though, I am certain of a kinship between us. There is something I must return to Melania. The will that was once her own. The dignity. The sense of self. That allowed her to resist the call of the Scarlet Rot. The pride she abandoned. To meet Radan's measure. Your help. I could not have defeated that quartet. I feel as if I've been in your debt from beginning to end. Thank you. With your help, I was able to live as my own person, if only in passing. But this is where things end. I pause to even tell you. I took out the needle myself. Tell whoever put you up to this that if I am to flower into something other than myself, I would rather rot into nothingness as I am. Please, let me pass alone. The scarlet rot writhes now, worse than ever. Soon. I won't be more than a mound of flesh, curse-laden, untouchable. I wouldn't want such a thing to bring you harm.
I dreamt for so long. My flesh was dull gold, and my blood rotted. Corpse after corpse left in my wake. As I awaited his return. Heed my words. I am Melania, Blade of Mikola. And I have never known defeat. Wait.
Ah, I see you've laid your hands on the other secret medallion. I'm glad to see my counsel has borne fruit, but the honor of the deed is yours alone. You've made more of yourself than Ensha has. Now, more importantly, both secret medallions are in your hands. I suppose you'd like to know, then. What awaits you on the path ahead? Me too, my friend. Me too. I wait with bated breath. Ah, so the secret medallions led you to the land of the Halic Tree. I'd expect to find Melania there. She who fought Radan to a standstill. Well, if the Scarlet Rot hasn't eaten her away completely. But with the Haley tree as it is, I suppose Mikola must already be. Ah, my apologies. Lost myself for a moment there. The information you shared is of great value. As promised, your reward. A secret right known only to me. You are a true fellow. All I ask is that you remain constant. So, the Haley tree. Now but a husk. I heard speculation Mikola embedded himself in the Haley tree. But before he could finish, someone cut the tree open and absconded with his infant form. Indeed. It seems those words held weight. How vexing that the All-Nine didn't have the full story. Perhaps the Queen's sorrow was justified. Ah, my apologies. Lost myself for a moment there. The information you shared is of great value. As promised, your reward. A secret right known only to me. You are a true fellow. All I ask is that you remain constant. Are you ready to commit a cardinal sin? Let my hand rest upon you for but a moment. shall burn. Burn for the sake of the new law. Guiding me here. The one who walks alongside Flame shall one day meet the road of destined death. You've done it, 
I see. What use do you have for me now? I am a finger reader. I will remain here until their dialogue ends and the fingers speak again. Do as you please. Take whatever course seems most worthy to you. Now you may go. You burned the herb tree, didn't you? Then the round table is soon to follow. Ah, no need to fret about that. The round table holds serve to put a tarnished upon the throne of Elden Lord. And if the herd tree needed to burn for that to happen, then the round table must go as well. I must learn all that can be taken from this place and sear it into my memory. How could I call myself the all-knowing if I did any less? Take a look around. The round table hold is burned, raised to the ground. Don't worry, I don't blame you. I'll continue spirit tuning just the same as before, which is why I need your help persuading Master Hugh to leave. His roots are so knotted in this place. He won't last much longer if he stays here. His shackles are broken. He's a free man now. It's high time he put the round table behind him. Oh, Smith, as long as you like. Now, lay out your arms. As I've always said, you came to challenge the demigods and their god, to slay them. And as long as you do, I will always smith your weapons. It is what I wish. To smith a weapon for you to slay a god. That's all I've lived for. And my promise to quit. And my promise to Queen America. But do me a favor and do. Do look after the girl. I see. You're here for some spirit tuning. Also, Master Hugh won't listen to you either. You have my thanks regardless. I'll try and talk him round next time. I know he was given this great entreaty to craft a weapon which could slay a god. Though I can't help but think of it as a curse. A fearsome curse. Put on him by Queen Marika. And if that's the case, I'm not sure there's anything we can do.
Unbound. And the lands between are shrouded by death's dark fate. But the flames will also burn the impenetrable thorns. It is then. You'll be Elden Lord yet.
day you'd come to stand before the Elden Ring, to become Elden Lord. What a sad state of affairs. I commend your spirit, but alas, none shall take the throne. Queen Marika has high hopes for us, that we continue to struggle unto eternity. Long and hard didst thou fight, tarnished warrior, spurned by the grace of gold. Be assured the Elden Ring resteth close at hand. Alas, I am returned. To be granted audience once more. Upon my name as Godfrey, the first Elden Lord.
I've given thee courtesy enough.
The fallen leaves tell a story of how a tarnished became Elden Lord. In our home, across the fog, the lands between. Our seed will look back upon us and recall an age of fracture.